After my recent multi-streaming video, I had somebody tell me, you know, I wish I could have my docs from both YouTube and Twitch in OBS at the same time while I'm multi-streaming because it's kind of annoying when you switch profiles, it takes all the docs from the other one away. So today's video is going to be a little bit of a mix of an older video I did where I talked about docs and that multi-streaming video. I'm going to show you how you can use docs to benefit you during a multi-stream. So first we're going to go up and set up our main streaming output. If you're doing YouTube and Twitch, I suggest this be YouTube for a few reasons, but mainly with the docs, YouTube's built-in docs with OBS are ones that are not as easy to get afterwards. So we're going to go ahead and go to our settings. We're going to go to our stream. We're going to do YouTube and I'm going to connect my account. All right, now that we've got that done, we can go ahead and press OK. We will get the YouTube docs by default right out of there. We'll have the chat and we'll have the new YouTube live control panel that's part of the OBS 30. So let's put this over here for now. You're going to have to log in to the YouTube live control panel. So go ahead and do that. Now that you're done that, we can do the steps that I talk about in the multi-stream RTMP video. I will leave a link up at the top here, but I'm going to do it very quickly. So we're just going to go ahead and add our new target and we're going to do Twitch and I'll get this one all set up. So now that we've got everything set up, I move the control panel over to the left side. I have the YouTube chat on the right side. You can either have the chats separated, um, which is the way I'm going to show you in this video, or you can combine them with something like Restream or Caster Labs or anything of that sort. The important thing that we need now are our Twitch docs. And as you can see, I have a whole bunch of them here. And what we're using is custom browser docs to bring these over. And we're going to be using the popouts from the Twitch dashboard. So if we go ahead and go to our Twitch stream manager, all of almost all these windows, if you click the little three dots in the right top hand corner, you can pop them out. When you pop them out, you're going to get an address that you can then copy. If you close it, it'll pull it back in there. You can go to OBS, you can go and do a new line. We can call this one secondary or whatever. I'm just not, not even type it properly. Press apply and there we go. And then you have to log in to your Twitch to be able to get access to that because it's basically like you're opening it in a new browser. So now that we've done that, we can go ahead and put this somewhere. So I'm gonna get rid of this one because it's a, it's a multiple of one that I already have. And we're gonna go ahead and grab our Twitch chat. So I'm going to put these side by side, but as I mentioned, you can have them combined using something like a restream. And I believe I have a restream one here. Um, again, if you use the restream one, you're going to have to log into your restream account. So make sure you do that. But there we go. We have our Twitch chat and our YouTube chat. We have our YouTube live control panel and we can go ahead and add our quick actions. What we're going to do is I'm going to make these on top of each other. So I don't need to see them both at the same time, like I do with the chats. So I can have them on top of each other like this, where if I need to edit my stream info for Twitch, I can go ahead and do that. And then if I need to go ahead and edit anything on my control panel for YouTube, I can do that. And you can have them tabbed here at the bottom like that. Now, one of the really cool benefits with OBS 30 is that you can also do full size top bottom docs. This will be really helpful for things like chat. So if you go ahead and you do your docs, you can do full height docs. And now we can get a full height. So now instead of having them side by side, if I want, I can do them top bottom and get a lot more information that way, make them a little bit skinnier. And if that fits the way that you would like to see your stuff a little bit more, then by golly, you can go ahead and do it. Um, we can move these things, you know, on top of each other still, if we want to, Move the audio mixer, we'll move it down here, right? So that this one is a little bit less tall and this is all the way. You can get really creative with this, but the full height docs really do make this a lot easier. And honestly, that's the easiest way to make sure that you have all the stuff that you need. Most people will really only need their chats. Most of their alerts will go through their chat and stuff like that. But as you can see here, I have a whole bunch of different items here, stream health, um, predictions, rewards, you can do a whole bunch of things. You can grab anything from your stream manager. You can pull it over. So if I want my activity feed, I'll go ahead, pop that out, grab the link, go back in here, custom browser, activity, and put that in there. I can go ahead and throw that right here. So it makes life very, very easy. You can get very creative with this. 
And if you have a large, large enough display, you can put a lot of information here, but I would suggest you try not to clutter it too much. Try to have the things you want as accessible as possible. And then with the other ones, like I said, you can stack them on top of each other with these tabs. Makes life very, very easy. So this can get used no matter what service you're using, Twitch, YouTube, Kick. I believe you can use this to put your Kick chat and your uh, Kick uh, edit stream info kind of stuff in here like I've done with Twitch. But you can also get very creative with this and use things that are not directly stream related. Some people have put Twitter their Twitter feed in here. Some people put a uh, straw poll. You know, they do a lot of straw polls in their streams. So they'll put a straw poll custom browser doc. Um, one that I kind of just thought about was I want to watch the score of the basketball game. So I'm going to go ahead and open this link. I can grab the URL, go back into OBS. We're going to go to doc. I already made it because I tried it out. We're going to delete this one. We're going to call it sports. Put that in there. It's going to open on up. It's going to reload itself. And there we go. We have the basketball game. And I can go ahead and stick that on top of my scenes. I don't care about my scenes. And I can keep an eye on the basketball score. You can go even further if you really wanted to. And, you know, we got APL here. I'm going to go ahead and do the pop out player. Grab that. Close that out. And I'm going to do bald, put that in there, and we got, we got APL. And I can go ahead and stick that right there. You're going to want to make it sizable so that it actually works properly if it's a video. And I can watch another stream while I'm streaming. Uh, if you're multi-streaming, this could be helpful. Uh, do keep in mind, though, the more demanding the browser items that you do have open like a stream is going to be a lot more demanding because you're decoding the video it is going to take up more resources so do keep that in mind but simple things like a page with a sports score for example not very demanding at all um, and again you can get as creative or you could be as boring as you want with these i've seen people use them in some pretty unique ways if you have any unique ways that you're using browser docs i'd love to hear it throw them down in the comments. But let me show you the way that I currently have my OBS set up for when I multi-stream on my streaming computer. All right, so this is the way that my OBS looks like when I'm multi-streaming. I have my control panel, my quick actions here like I was showing you. Um, that's great. I have my rewards and predictions here. Now I use Caster Labs when multi-streaming. I've been trying it lately and I really do enjoy it. I have caster chat here, which combines both chats together, which is really helpful. Unfortunately, when you're not currently actively streaming on YouTube, it just constantly yells at you in the chat, which is a little bit unfortunate, but oh well. And then I have my caster feed and then my caster viewers, which again, it combines the viewers between both streaming platforms together into one easy viewable place. You could do this with the separated docs or with something that combines it, like I mentioned before. And other than that, that's pretty much the layout. I do change things up relatively often. And uh, yeah, so really that's it. Again, relatively simple video. I'm mainly just combining two older videos together and using the knowledge from both of those to make your experience a little bit better with multi-streaming. Really do hope this video helped you out. And if not, I at least hope you found it interesting. If you did, I'd really appreciate it if you like, subscribed. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, you can go ahead and leave those down in the comment section below. Big thanks to my patron sponsors, Thoughts Simon Step Back, and thank you for watching to the end of this video. If you do want to see those two older videos or any of my other streaming related videos, you can check out the playlist right up here. And as always, stay safe out there. I'll see you next time.